support and lower taxes to save their market. Automakers in this car market joining counterparts in Europe and the U.S. as they uh, deal with a slowdown, a lurch down, a deep freeze in the car market. What is going on there? How bad is it? Sean Ryan, Managing Director at China Markets Research, joins us from Shanghai, the company's strategic market intel firm in the PRC. Sean, good morning to you. How bad is it over there good morning, in China? I didn't know that they had a Detroit Motown problem of their own. Well, I think there's going to be some difficulties in the auto sector in the next 6 to 12 months in China. We've gone out and interviewed consumers. Um, and about 70% are still very optimistic. They're going out and spending, still buying shoes and clothes. But there are only two sectors that they say they're not going to buy from in the next couple months. One is real estate. The second is auto. Um, people are sort of taking a wait-and-see attitude to see if the global financial crisis will hit China or not. Um, and so people are not going out and buying the cars at the 20 25% clip that they've been doing the last couple of years. Um, so I think that there is a reason to be worried for auto sectors here, both foreign and domestic. But what about their gearing, though? I mean, are they are they in the dire straits to the tune that the, the three U.S. majors are? I mean, are they? Are they I mean, if, if they had the opportunity, would they go begging hat in hand on the Chinese equivalent of Capitol Hill, saying, "Give us twenty-five billion dollars"? No, I think the situation is very different. I mean, you look, the Detroit automakers have bloated expenses. I mean, you see, like, GM alone has spent over half billion U.S. dollars a year on sports marketing. It's incredible. The Chinese industry is still fairly strong, um, but because of slowing demand, because they are very leveraged, they're going to get hit hard in the next 6 to 12 months. But it's a very different scenario. I mean, they've been adapting, really improving. You see uh, some of the cars from Cherry five years ago to now, and they're pretty darn good. And I could see them in 10 years moving into American shores. Um, they're starting to innovate and have more fuel-efficient cars. So I think it's a very different situation. That being said, I think it would make sense for the Chinese government to really help support the domestic auto industry by giving more tax breaks or research money for fuel-efficient cars, smaller cars, smaller engines, and that might cut down on the pollution and the high energy use problem that we see in China. Well, the uh, most immediate effect could be uh, cutting the uh, tariffs. I mean, sales taxes amount to, in some cases, 50%. I mean, if I had to itch, cut a check to the car dealer and pay uh, pad on an extra 50% to satisfy the, uh, the government, chances are I'd probably be sticking with my bicycle instead. Yeah, especially on the um, imported cars. I mean, you see like an S600 Mercedes costs about 350000 U.S. dollars here, um, mostly because of the high import duties. But I think the domestic cars, the tax is a lot more reasonable, um, and we just need to really push more towards fuel efficiency. Wouldn't it be great if China made all of the taxis in China have to be hybrids? That would send a great signal to the country that we're going to try to reduce some of the pollution problems. Actually, actually, the tariff issue is something we should take up at a separate time. I just got back from Hainan Island. I couldn't find a Budweiser, a Michelob, or uh, or a fifth of a Johnny Walker without paying at least like 50 or 60 bucks for uh, Red Label. Uh, which of the automakers is, is best positioned to uh, weather all this? I mean, you've obviously got your VW, your, your, your GM, the, uh, the uh, domestic homegrown uh, plays. Who's got the wherewithal? Who has cost containment uh, at a better point than anybody else? I think the stronger players right now would be Toyota um, because they've been creating good value with their cars. They've been very fuel efficient. I mean, the, uh, the gasoline prices are over three U.S. dollars a gallon right now. They're really very high. Um, I think BMW and Mercedes at the high end because the real affluent Chinese are still buying. But I think there's going to be a real shakeup in the industry. The companies that have bloated expenses and that have not created very innovative um, cars are going to have a lot of problems. You see Peugeot just cut 1,000 employees in China. It's not so much because people are not buying cars, it's people don't want to buy Peugeot cars because they're like the same price as a BMW, but they're tiny and kind of ugly. So I think the companies that are going to have issues would be a Peugeot, a Fiat, um, a Buick, but I think there are going to be some real winners. Ford is doing okay. Again, Mercedes, BMW. So there's going to be a real shakeup in the industry. I've, uh, I've owned both a Peugeot and a BMW, so I know exactly what you're talking about. I concur. Uh, <laughs> one quick question. You know, with all the stuff going on at Wall Street, what is the chance that protectionism is going to get even worse and make it harder for the Cheeries and Geely's to export within the next decade? Um, I think there will be a lot of protectionism in the next couple years, um, but I think 10 years from now, American consumers are going to say they want cheaper products um, and they want decent value. So we think that a lot of Chinese companies are going to go out and start doing a lot of mergers and acquisitions in the United States. We actually just finished research 
where we interviewed 100 Chinese companies and 70% of the big companies said that they're going to increase their M&A expansion into the United States and Europe in the next two years to take advantage of low mm -hmm. valuations. So I think you should look okay. for more Chinese companies going abroad. Okay, look for more uh, public safety uh, camp awareness campaigns too. 20 kilometer drive from Sanya Phoenix Airport to Yaolong Bay, four accidents in the space of 20 minutes. They got, you've got to learn to drive over there, Sean. We'll talk soon. Sean Ryan <laughs> there in Shanghai. Oil